Hello, my name is Scott for SP Gaming, and welcome back to Transport Fever European Free Play Edition. And in the last episode, we got some freight connections set up between Godalming, Gainsborough, and Dovercourt. With our existing infrastructure that we've been setting up over the last couple episodes, we have. If we. Actually. Wow, that's a lot of cargo. All right about that. Anyway, on Gainsborough and Godalming is being supplied with construction materials. In addition, because we connected up this line here, we are running fuel into both towns, essentially, as well as any goods from out this area, which is the machines and tools, which is the food, can flow up this way via West Mulling just making this even more profitable. Although, machines and tools only two in one. All right about that. Now, that line is running up basically crude oil as well as slag. Nice. Slag from the West Mulling steel mill is making up this way. And uh, yeah, actually that's about it. The rest of this is destined for Dovercourt. All right about that. So yeah, we have that set up. We have seven and 22. And that goes like that now. Um, really? Uh, no. Um, yeah, we're going to go West Molly to Dover Court. I don't want it coming into this side. We are going to set this up for Terminal 5. So yeah, that goes like that. And Terminal 2. Oh no. Terminal 2. Wow. Alright about that. And the Carlton Coval dock, we want to lock that. And that decide to change for whatever reason. We... Seriously? We d No! Don't! We've been through this already. Yeah, you should be going like that. And now over here, we have... Seriously, game? Will you stop doing this? Uh, West Mulling. We want this to be forced into three. There's no reason whatsoever to do something so silly like that. Uh, we are going to lock this into three. And this into three. Doesn't really matter. Although, apparently it does. <laughs> we are going to lock this into one or maybe we'll set it to two and over here it can be in three that is fine now any other lines want to do something funky graze the curl and coval those are both locked. Grace the From. Those are both locked. All right. And now. Yep, that is fine. So those connections are good. I don't think we'll be sending any more ship lines into West Mulling. So West Mulling is wrapped up. Dovercourt is wrapped up. I will be sending one up to Ludgers Hall from Gray's. From to Ludgers Hall. We will be doing one to Oakham, Carlton Koval, but we will get to those connections once I've extended to Oakham. I was considering setting up some passenger transport over in this area, although there's a few things I might want to do before that. I've been thinking about passenger rail between Dovercourt. We have the station set up. 
We could run passenger rail over to Crown Coval, up to Gainsborough. I'd probably do Dovergort, Gainsborough, Oakham, up to Kings Lynn. And then Dovercourt, Salterton, Whitney, over to East Ham. But I think I might want to work on this. Yes, indeed. So last year we made an income of $15.2 million. We had loan interest of 30 k we're down to $3 million loan, so that's going to be 45 k in interest. We were at a high of whatever this is. $15 million-ish. No, not $15, 15 million. Uh, Whatever. Uh, about $6 million, I think, or $5.5 million. We had running costs of $8.38 million on income of fifteen point two. We bumped up. This year, let's just hit the play button. Because I think there is going to be a new vehicle coming out. Yep, there it is. And we have the PLM 220 and the DMG Canstat. And the steak car. And that is the 05F line. All right. So we made a total of $19.2 million of income on $9 million of running costs. So about $10 million right there. We had construction costs of about 200 k We had uh, $7.5 million in new vehicles. That was the biggest expense there. Over a million dollars in property maintenance a year. So that is not insignificant. So we are going to increase that even further by running a rail line which will connect from here over to here i will probably do this leg first before we extend onwards this may be a two or three episode run and so i'm going to set up a station here we're not going to have it run here we want a maximum throughput of goods where possible and so This looks to be probably the most efficient place to set this up because otherwise we have kind of a hill and we are going to need money 45k in loans let's go to 1.47 million and we have freight station And we are going to want steel going out like that. We are going to want a um, gondola line or open wagon line. So we are going to only want two tracks, uh, no second street connection. We're going to go 320. And I don't think we're going to do any curvature. Now we could. Put it right out here. I'm going to want to shoot for actually that slope right there. So we're going to shift this across like that. And we can find a pretty decent price. $199. Sure, that works. And in like that. Now we got the PLM 220. It costs $1.09 million. It is a 60 kilometer hour top speed train, 450 kilowatts of power, 75 kilonewtons of tractive effort. That compares to a 10% increase on the top speed. It increases the power by almost three times. It uh, increases the tractive effort by 15 kilonewtons. And tractive effort becomes more important as the trains increase in, uh, what was it, uh, yeah, weight. We have the compartment car, which we got back in 1883. No reason why we needed this back in 1883, since the only train to be able to K 
carry it, run it was the PLM, which comes up in 1890. Although with that said, 11 capacity for 255K, whatever that math works out. Um, yeah, about that. Seven tons for eight passengers for, versus 10 tons for 11 passengers. Right there, I know immediately seven to eight versus 10 to 11. I think the 10 to 11 is slightly more efficient weight uh, capacity wise. It is a higher running cost and you aren't, especially with the class 53 Prussian, going to get a higher ticket price. So you're just paying more costs. I'm thinking you would have always been better off just going with the Bavarian car rather than so we also have the steak car, which comes out in 1890. Oh, we lose the steak car in 1892. Wow. Seriously? We're nowhere near getting a 120 kilometer an hour wagon. I might just edit the lifespans of the European wagons here just so that you know these don't expire because I really do not want anything more than an 80 kilometer hour top speed wagon because we just got the 60 kilometer hour PLM 220 <laughs> uh, yeah and this is um, yes yeah, over three times the price twice the capacity we can't benefit from the top speed its weight is identical. Two of these is the same as that. And two of these 40.8K or 41.6K versus 64.3K. It doesn't make sense to go up to this unless you can get 100 to 120 kilometer hour trains. So yeah, this is gonna have no lifespan. <laughs> Especially now that we are jumping into that. With that said, we also have the, not that, the DMG Canstat, which is a six capacity, 25 kilometer per hour, top speed vehicle worth 31.6K, 5.27K in running cost per year. And we had one other thing, actually no, those three things, yeah, about that. All right, so my plan long run is going to have a line that goes from here over to here. And then I think a second one, the coal line is going to probably go from here. I'm going to split it off about here and I'm going to run it this way. Coming across here and maybe cross over to get right over to here directly. I might even run it and just run it right into here. Or I might run it past and go to there. Actually, no, I'd have to stop here to drop off to pick up iron ore. Yeah, about that. Anyway, let's get started with the first leg, which will get steel from here directly to here. Then we'll extend it to there at a later time. So we are going to want to track and you're going to flat in there so that we can put in a crossover and like that now Could save money or maybe we are going to want to come around the hill and that raises up just a bit you know what I'm 
At this point in time, I'm probably going to want to prioritize keeping things flat and not being too concerned about how much things cost. And we're going to want to shoot past the farm. it down and then we are going to want to connect directly onto there and what is in the way uh, there's a hill that's fine this looks like a low lying slope Although we are going to want to split this off so we run off in that direction. Or another option is I just split it here. And just bridge over the farm. There'd be a tunnel right there. Actually, whoa, uh, no. All right, here we are going to want to tear that out. And I know that this is on the flat, so this should not be an issue. Bring it out straight. And now we are going to want signal there, signal there, signal there. All right, so here is a height of 109. We got 130 ish in there. We got 140 there. There's a bit of a dip here. So 140. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it on the flat.
sure. Let's borrow up a million. And then just connect this up to there. This is the right side. So we're gonna have a tunnel. Actually, we're going to wanna thinking keeping it on the flat to about there. And actually I'm going to double track this section here. And if we run from there over to there, $1.15 million, what does it otherwise do? So tunnel there. Here's a question, did I actually have to tunnel there? 130, that was about 124, 137, yep. Let's borrow. And that's on the left side. All right about that. How much will it take to double track the rest of this? Well, that's nothing. 164. Although the tunnel is going to be... Um, for now, what we are going to do... Nope. Let's just start the tunnel and complete that. And what I can do, might as well do a crossover. Signal, signal. I'm going to want, probably want crossover there, crossover there. We are going to want to do the same thing here, but actually, do we save money? Only 522K. Sure, let's just double track it. We'll want to in the long run. And I'm going to signal there, signal there, say signal there. We are going to want to signal there. And I'll signal there. And I will do these off screen. All right, so that section has been signaled, although we still need to double track this right here. So it's not all over. 222K, just enough. Jeez. Uh, let's let things run. And, yep. Now uh, complete the signal there. Fine. We are going to want to. S nope, not signal there. Signal there. And for now, I'm going to. Actually, I don't need to do those. I'm going to force that to be. And we're going to do that. We don't want these one way because trains need to come in this way. Now, we are going to uh, Yeah, this is probably going to be a bit expensive Or rather, can we even put a depot? Yes, we can for 229 Wow Alright, about that Right here, and 
and 61k not as bad by trains we are going to run the hmm for now we're just gonna go with the Prussian G3 buy and we are just going to go with two state cars we are going to set this to new line from here all the way over to here. Now with that said, we are going to want this to run that way eventually. So we are going to want to run this Actually, I'm almost thinking rather than combining this onto here, just quad tracking this and bringing that directly into there because there's no reason I'm going to need to bring it. Actually, yeah, that's going to be better. Better over the long run, then I don't have to do a junction here and junction here and all of that. Now, Alright, we're going to bring that like that. Let's let things run. There we go. Now, we can double slip that. We can't double slip that. Alright. We are going to... To one way that, one way that, and we are going to do this one here. Alright, I'm going to want this to basically swing right across there. For now, we are just going to keep it on the flat. signals so we don't have to do it later one way and one way those have been done we are going to want to disconnect that we're going to disconnect that and we need 36.8k There we go. And then over here. Oh, we have steel. Nice. Four units of steel. What it will do, of course, is reduce the profitability of that line by redirecting the steel away from that line. And yep. Six units. This should be fine. This is going to be the TF West Mulling to Upton Steel line. And we are going to color that. And we have another freight line. That will provide a more direct connection with the steel. And we have a ton of stuff sitting here. Just to confirm, yep, yeah, it has to come into here. And actually, we'll lock that and lock that. This line. Yep, everything is locked. And we have 700,000 in the bank. It is January 24th. Maybe we can pay off another million 
<laughs> Seven and a half million loans. Jeez. And where's our train right now? Train is right there. Let's speed her up and go for a ride. We have 1.05 million dollars in the bank. What I'm going to do, now that we have steel crewing there, there's no upgrade or downgrade scheduled, really. We'll ramp this up. By trains, we are going to go with another one. And we are going to add four state cars. We're gonna run that on the West Mulling Dupton Steel. And what I would like to do is I would like to send this back to the Dnepo. Although with that said, now we'll set it to the line. And we are just going to, oh, march first. Set this, plus 53 Prussian, one, two, three, and four. You want to replace now, we just have to pay 252k. There's only seven units of steel sitting there. This might be too much capacity. Yep, yeah, we're just going to leave it as is. Alright, at this point in time, I'm going to end the episode here because the original recording went on a little bit too long. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Transport Fever, European Free Play Edition. Thank you for watching. My name is Scott for SP Gaming, and as always, have a good day.